Let's learn about O-Gives. All right, an O-Give <clears throat> is uh, related to a histogram. So we have data that are binned. And let's look at the data that we were playing with before. Let's say we have students that are four and a half feet tall to five feet tall to five and a half to six, six and a half, and seven. And the data that we just invented last time were that we had 10 students. So here are our heights. And here is our frequency. So we had 10 students that were between four feet and four and a half. 12 students that were between four and a half and 50, four and a half and five. 20 between five and five and a half, and then 18, four, and then one. So what we want to do with a cumulative frequency line graph or a, an OGIV is to calculate the um, cumulative frequency. So we have 10 students below four and a half feet. We have 22 students between or lower than five feet, 42 that are shorter than five and a half feet, 60 that are shorter than six feet, 64 that are shorter than six and a half, and 65 that are shorter than seven. And all I've done here is the, I've just added it up as we go, right? 10 plus 12 equals 22. 10 plus 12 plus 20 equals 42. 10 plus 12 plus 20 plus 18 equals 80. Right, so we're calculating a cumulative frequency as we move down the line. We can also turn this into a relative cumulative frequency. Relative cumulative frequency, where we turn these into percentages. So we have a total of 65. 10 of 65 is about 15%. 22 of 65 is about 34%. So now we're arguing that 34% of our students are 5 feet tall or shorter. Um, 65 are 5 and a half or shorter. 92% of our students are 6 feet tall or shorter. And then we go up to 98 and we go up to 100. Either of these um, are acceptable. But our, our OGIV or our cumulative frequency line graph then looks like what we had before. Over here on this side, we're going to have frequencies, except now we're going up to our cumulative frequency. So we have to start with, well, we'll start with zero here, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and here is 60. And then down here on the bottom, we're going to have the same units we had on our x-axis that we had in the histogram. So we'll start at 4.5, 5, 6.5, sorry, 5.5, 6, 6.5, and 7. <clears throat> and our cumulative frequency then is at 4... 0.5, we have 10. At 5, we had 22. Then up to 42. 60. And then 64. And then 65. And we connect those with the line. Okay, so that's an OGIV. It's showing the cumulative frequency of binned data. So our data have to at least be ordinal. Uh, generally, we're dealing with interval ratio data. And then the only other difference is if we had done this with the relative cumulative frequencies, right, this would be this line that intersects with the last point, right? That would have been our 100%. And this would have been 10%. Oh no, 15% right here, right? And then we would have the range of percentages along this axis instead of the relative, instead of the <clears throat> actual cumulative frequencies. But that is how we create an OGIV. It shows instead of how many individuals we had between or membership in each bin, it shows that value and below. Let's talk about how to create an OGIV or a cumulative frequency line graph in R. We will use the sample data set faithful which is data on eruptions of Old Faithful at Yellowstone National Park. Uh, we're interested in the 
duration of eruptions. So I will extract the eruptions variable out of duration. And the easiest way to create a cumulative frequency line graph in R is to take advantage of the histogram function. Remember, this is what we use to create histograms. It will automatically create bins and then count up the number of eruptions that occurred within each one of those bins. So we're going to take advantage of that, and I don't need it to draw the histogram, so I'm going to create, I'm going to set plot equal to false, and then I want to take a look at the results. So I'll send all those over, and we'll zoom in and check out what we've got. So R determined on its own, if you have a reason to want this to be otherwise, you can specify, but R determined in its defaults that the best way to bin these data were to say eruptions that lasted a minute and a half to two minutes, then two minutes to two and a half minutes, and on up until five minutes to five and a half minutes. Here are the counts. So there were 55 eruptions between one and a half minutes and two minutes, and 37 between two minutes and two and a half, and so on up. And here also calculates the midpoints. So halfway between 1.5 and two, is 1.75 and halfway between 2 and 2.5 is 2 and a quarter. Right, I mean that makes sense. So I now have an object called H that contains all of these, all of this information. And so to create the, the line graph, I'm just going to say with H, and that means now anything in these parentheses that happens after that comma, if I refer to a variable, R knows to find that variable inside H. So I can say plot mids against counts okay and if i run that it does exactly that it has created that graph that's not what we're interested in though we're interested in the cumulative sum so we're going to put the counts variable inside the function cum sum c u m s u m and it will calculate out the cumulative sum of the counts I also here I'm going to say that I want the type set to B, that is the lowercase letter B as in bubblegum, so that it is both a line graph and a point dot graph. And I'm going to set the point character, or PCH, equal to 16, so that instead of these open circles, I get filled circles. Okay, and so here is my cumulative frequency line graph. It says that I had just over 50 eruptions that happened between a minute and a half and two minutes. Nearly 100, or 90, happened between two minutes and two and a half minutes, and so on until all of my eruptions, or just over 250 of them, took uh, you know, between five and five and a half minutes. Um, the only thing I'm going to do to make this a little bit more uh, reader friendly is I'm going to say that x label should be equal to eruption time in minutes and the y label should be equal to uh, cumulative frequency and all I'm doing there is changing these so that, that makes a little bit more sense right if I had wanted this to be uh, changing the labels if I had wanted this to be a relative frequency relative cumulative frequency line graph or a, a relative frequency OGIV I could just come up here and where here where I'm calculating the cumulative sum of counts, I could just divide that by the sum of counts. Okay, and by doing that, the graph is going to stay the same, except for over here on the y-axis, instead of going from 50 to 250, it is now going to go uh, from 20% up to 100%. Either way, we have created an OGIV or a cumulative frequency line graph.